Uh, I'm Barbara Petroselli. I lead marketing at Cambridge Semantics, and our presenter today is Ben Zeckley, who's the chief revenue officer and co-founder of Cambridge Semantics. I'm going to turn this over to Ben in just a second. Uh, but before I did that, I just wanted to bring to your attention uh, the various sessions where we are participating at this conference. Um, today, of course, we have this session with Ben. Uh, we also have uh, two more sessions this afternoon around enterprise scalability with Ben. He'll do some Q&A immediately after this during the break at our booth uh, in the, uh, the virtual trade show area. So please come and visit us there. Um, and we also have our other co-founder, Sean Martin, presenting a session about automating knowledge graph construction. And then tomorrow, um, second down from the top, we have a panel discussion with IT leaders from Bosch, Raytheon, Deloitte, and Merck, uh, KGAA, that you will not want to miss uh, from 12 to 1230. And again, we have special sessions in the morning, midday, in the end, and afternoon. Um, the four folks from those companies are actually going to join us tomorrow in the midday break from one um, to two to talk uh, to talk with anybody, do a little Q and A after that actual um, uh, presentation. So please come and, and chat with them directly as well. So I think all of us at this conference recognize that knowledge graphs as a technology and as an architecture are really coming into sort of mainstream adoption more and more. And we certainly experience this in our conversations with uh, our prospects and our customers, but we also hear it from people like the Gartner Group who said, for example, that in the last year, the number of inquiries they've taken about graph has tripled. Um, they're forecasting that 80% of companies will be using graph in some um, significant um, implementation by 2025. And this year in their top 10 data and analytics uh, trends report, they actually named graph as one of the top 10 trends in data and analytics uh, for this coming year. The question, however, is how do you build adequate scalability into a uh, graph deployment such that it can cope with the requirements of an enterprise scale knowledge graph? And certainly this starts with having a high performance graph database engine that can cope with large numbers of users, diverse data sets and heavy analytic loads. But it goes beyond that. It also requires that the platform has capabilities as would be required by diverse users, ranging from those with very um, advanced technical and data skills to those who are beginners and different kinds of people, data engineers, data modelers, um, subject matter experts around the data, um, uh, data consumers, um, end users, et cetera. Um, it has to also support the whole end-to-end -end process. So the process of building a knowledge graph begins with onboarding data from sources, but then there's phases of modeling the data, blending the data, exploring the data, and then making it available for consumption. And the platform needs to really address that end-to-end. -end. Of course, if it's going to be deployed at scale in a large organization, it also has to offer the kind of hardened enterprise-grade security and governances that capabilities that companies expect. It has to enable collaboration and reuse things like versioning or the ability to share work or publish content that be, can then be uh, built on or consumed by others within the environment. And it has to fit in and work nicely within the existing landscape of the company. So all of the existing data platforms and tools and workflows, the Knowledge Graph platform has to be able to integrate with that seamlessly. So those are really some of the topics that Ben is going to walk us through today. And having said all that, I turn it over to Ben. Well, thank you, Barbara. And thanks, everyone, for, for joining today virtually at the Knowledge Graph Conference. We're really excited to, to be here with you all. And you know, we've got, in addition to this talk, we've got some interactive, uh, maybe some Ask Me Any sessions and some roundtables. You'll get a chance to interact with many of the Knowledge Graph thought leaders at Cambridge Semantics. Um, and for discussions around you know, some of the points we'll cover today, is there, in addition to other things around Knowledge Graph you'd like to ask us. Um, but as Barbara mentioned, you know, today we're really going to talk about you know scalable knowledge graph, and it's it is really an exciting time. I think for the the last you know decade or more, as companies like Google and Facebook have had you know knowledge graph capabilities as part of the backbones of their product, enterprises have really been asking the question, you know, how do we get that you know for our data, um, and how do we we sort of tame a lot of the the heterogeneity of data with a knowledge graph for discovery and analytics uh, within our company. And what I'm going to talk to you about today are some use cases that, that our customers are, are applying Knowledge Graph to, 
um, a little bit about the requirements for a scalable knowledge graph, a brief introduction to our product and, and how we begin to solve some of these problems and then some of the steps to get started. So first, you know, why knowledge graph? You know, there are many reasons to build a knowledge graph at, you know, Cambridge Semantics. We really believe that the killer app for a knowledge graph is data integration, often referred to as a data fabric. And this is really all about connecting silo data and simplifying the complexity that really naturally occurs when you're bringing data together, you know, from multiple sources. And many of those sources are unstructured data. The data is dirty. They've got different formats. Um, and you want to use it to, to address unanticipated questions that are changing all the time. And so Knowledge Graph uniquely um, is positioned to address a lot of these challenges, you know, bringing in unstructured data, uh, presenting tailored views to different business users and constituents to solve new use cases as they come online, bringing new data sources on the fly. And what we really, really focus on at CSI is making this problem scale really well to, you know, hundreds of data sources, you know, billions of, of RDF triples or vertices and edges in the, in, in, in the graph and really being able to do this for those sorts of use cases. And we'll start with, with one use case around scaling knowledge graph for the FDA's data fabric. Um, so the FDA is obviously a very important um, organization to all of us these days with, you know, approving drugs, tracking the efficacy, working through clinical trials. And at the FDA, there are in fact many departments uh, that are involved in this process from from patient safety to clinical trials to approvals to patents different types of regulations and each of these parts of the agency has different data sources that are in play uh, when it comes to to uh, <clears throat> performing their functions now in order to move more quickly organizations naturally want to create single views of key key entities like a drug product that's coming from these different sources but the data is diverse many of it's unstructured there's different namings and relationships so a knowledge graph delivered at scale can connect all this data together and allow them to ask questions, do analytic use cases, deliver combinations of data to end users in a highly rapid iterative fashion um, as the data volumes grow and as new use cases come on board. And so a knowledge graph, which we often define as a connected graph of data and metadata to richly model real world entities is a really good way to create this single view of a drug product. You, know, you have these simple knowledge graphs that represent the, the orange book and the FAIRS database. And those can connect together through the knowledge graph against a canonical product concept that now allows you to traverse and crosswalk um, across these different types of information in these two different sources. And then you know, one level down, you have examples of the actual data sources themselves. You have two largely structured data sources and, and one unstructured data. And the objective here is to turn these, these structured data sources into the, the knowledge graphs that you see below, uh, and same with the unstructured, and then be able to connect them up. Now, in this simple example, we have the, the knowledge graph in this example fits on a slide. Um, you've got about a, a handful of, of, uh, of nodes and relationships and, and effectively RDF triples. Um, but in reality, this grows into hundreds of millions and billions of relationships as you grow these use cases. So in a situation like this use case really calls for the ability to deal with many sources, uh, the lineage of the data, the complex transformations, the security constraints that come into play when you're bringing this data together, and then being able to serve it out to the broad numbers of users to deal with the kinds of analytic questions that they have. Um, another example is in the manufacturing space, changing gears here a little bit. Um, you have data coming from you know, multiple manufacturing lines. You have error codes. You have, you, have, you have different kinds of machine languages. You have different manufacturers that are bringing um, uh, this information together. How do you be able to reduce the amount of time it takes analysts to figure out you know, what went wrong in a situation or how do I optimize the, the construction of my assembly line? Um, based on the data that I'm seeing. And so a knowledge graph is a really good way um, to bring all this information together. Uh, but again, this is a situation where scale is really required here because we're not just talking about a knowledge graph that represents the digital twin of how manufacturing lines are constructed, although that's important. We're talking about actually bringing all the real time um, aggregate and, and, and granular data and, and sorry, codes coming from those, those machines and bring it actually into the knowledge graph itself. So you're now again talking about billions of RDF triples and nodes and relationships that have to be integrated together and presented uh, to end users. So really calling for, for scalability. 
Um, and this is just one example uh, of a use case in the broader uh, manufacturing space, often called Industry 4.0 where you have uh, a large knowledge gap that spans not only just manufacturing, but also the data sources that were involved in developing the products like product lifecycle management or engineering systems, and then moving beyond manufacturing into IOT and how these smart connected products are actually being used in the real world. Um, and they're generating data that needs to be put into the knowledge graph. So now we're talking about hundreds or even thousands of sources of data with many different entity types that all need to be brought together and integrated. And to really deliver on the promise of knowledge graph in these use cases, scale is again, really, really important. Uh, not just in terms of the data volumes, but in terms of manning the lineage, the process, the life cycle, the deployment, everything that goes into delivering um, this kind of knowledge graph across many different kinds of use cases. Okay, we'll pivot here to another example, this time from the financial services space, where firms are increasingly trying to be more effective and efficient in terms of how they detect risky behavior and ensure compliance with regulations. And so often this means being able to bring together data from different kinds of employee interactions, uh, training data, uh, network communications, and pulling all this together and having one place where analysts can go to be alerted about potential risky behavior, but also being able to drill down and explore and traverse these different data sources in a highly interactive and efficient fashion. And so obviously knowledge graph is a really good way to do this. It's a single way to integrate data from these structured and unstructured sources and provide a lot of flexibility in terms of new data sources coming in, new different kinds of alerts and rules that need to be run on top of the graph. But again, it's going to get really large and to give you an, a sense of you know, how large this gets with, with some of the customers that we've been working with, these get into the tens of billions of triples really, really fast when they wanna keep you know, multiple years of data online and integrated into a knowledge graph, updating multiple times a day as new uh, documents are coming in, new trading information is coming in, new reference data is coming in. And the knowledge graph is changing dynamically and bringing all this information together um, and making it available um, in a real time format. Um, so scale, again, in terms of managing the security and diversity of sources coming from the different databases and repositories, but also being able to respond to queries in just a couple of seconds or less as analysts are hitting it from multiple parts of the globe concurrently. And the last example um, that I believe we're going to go through today is a real world patient data knowledge graph. We're bringing data about insurance claims, uh, healthcare records, all anonymized, of course, to be able to do uh, analysis of patient outcomes, uh, drug efficacies, uh, sales and marketing use cases. And this data is available from multiple commercial sources. Certainly pharma companies are producing it all the time, um, but there is a real desire to be, be able to bring this together uh, queer for patient cohorts and mine that data uh, for efficiencies and opportunities um, for better patient outcomes. Um, but as you again might imagine, you know, this data is quite large and each of the different colors here represents a different uh, data source that's contributing into this knowledge graph, whether that's claims data, um, enrollment data, clinical trial data, um, healthcare records. And all in each of these nodes, of course, has many different uh, you know, potential attributes um, associated with it. And really just to give you a sense of uh, the magnitude of data that we're talking about, this is just a, a subset um, of data from one use case from, from a handful of different sources. Um, so it's around 300 gigabytes you know, worth of data, which you know, in, the, in the age of petabytes and terabytes, that doesn't sound that large, but that translates into you know, 76 billion uh, triples um, that are generated. And this has to be generated rapidly because the, the data is changing all the time. It's coming in on a re recurring basis. So it's not enough to, to generate it once over a long period of time. You have to be able to do it regularly, keep the knowledge graph updated and be able to deal with um, you know, data sources of this volume. With this type of data volumes, it's really important that the knowledge graph platforms are able to scale uh, to the kinds of use cases that, that customers are looking to deploy today. So to summarize, you know, to, to really deliver a, a, a data fabric at this scale, um, the knowledge graph platform one has to be able to deal with all of the, the organization's data, um, onboarding data from diverse sources, uh, speeds, formats, and schemas. 
you have to be able to connect and access data in the fabric rapidly. Um, so with an underlying knowledge graph, not everyone in the world is going to know Sparkle or, or Cypher or other graph query languages. So all the existing tools and user constituencies must be able to tap into the knowledge graph query and access it easily. It also has to really fit into an organi organization's existing and planned IT and, and cloud environment. So knowledge graphs don't exist on islands. Um, you know, they're not a, a, a standalone capability. They're very much deployed as an overlay that works in a cloud environment like AWS or on-prem on top of OpenShift. So they have to be able to leverage uh, these data environments, integrate with them, serve data from them, and be able to deliver data to users that are making use of those cloud, cloud capabilities. Um, they have to be able to respond to queries, you know, very rapidly. There are certainly some types of queries against knowledge graphs that you can run the query and wait, you know, several minutes or hours for the answer. But increasingly, as in many of the use cases we've talked about today, users want interactive um, experiences with their knowledge graph. They want to ask a question, run a query, have it, have it come back in seconds or less, and be able to pivot their question and really have a conversation with their data. So speed and interactivity of the knowledge graph is really critical. And we want to be able to um, access the data with a whole variety of, of skilled users. So low code, no code options are really important, um, but <clears throat> as well as being able to connect in your own analytics tools, as we've previously talked about. And finally, keeping the data safe and secure within the knowledge graph is really central. You know, we're asking a lot of organizations to bring data from different parts of the business together into the knowledge graph to service these insights. It's really important that these platforms be really good stewards of the data offer security and robustness so that as users are querying the knowledge graph, they're only getting access to data that they have rights to see. And so all of these requirements are, are really what are driving you know, our roadmap and innovation at Cambridge Semantics as we look to deliver Anzo, which is our scalable knowledge graph platform. Um, as many here are aware, Anzo is built on our underlying massively parallel um, OLAP knowledge graph engine, Anzo Graph, which is, which is available as well. Anzo Graph is really good at rapidly integrating, querying data for analytic and data transformation type of workloads. Uh, built around Anzo Graph is the overall Anzo Knowledge Graph Management Platform. So it's all the tooling that you need to rapidly you know, get up and running with Graph, manage the metadata in the Knowledge Graph coming from different sources, as well as the process and lifecycle that goes into keeping a Knowledge Graph updated in real time. And we, of course, build everything on top of enterprise-grade cloud security and deployment operations. Uh, one, one level down within the Knowledge Graph platform, so in the management layer, we have the onboard model blend and access. You know, it's both a set of capabilities as well as a workflow methodology uh, for building and managing a Knowledge Graph over time. So onboarding allows users uh, uh, various skill sets to rapidly onboard metadata and data um, from different data sources and connect it into the Knowledge Graph. Uh, one of the key capabilities there is to automatically build the knowledge graph from whatever data source it's coming from and then using the modeling step allowing the users to transform and manipulate that model into a, a graph model that's solving one or more business problems and do that in an iterative fashion uh, the graph mart is a novel concept where users can define uh, really their own knowledge graph that's sourced from multiple sources using multiple models as well as transformation steps the Graph Mart is running on top of Anzo Graph and Kubernetes to kind of spin up a right size cluster um, and combine uh, the data together and allow them to run queries to transform, manipulate, and serve the data out. Um, the access layer is where users can plug in BI tools like Tableau or Power BI or connect in with your data science notebooks to work with the data in the knowledge graph, even if those tools or users are not that graphware themselves. We also offer a, 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 an inbuilt uh, exploratory analytics environment that features a query generator so users can build dashboards and explore the data without having to write any queries. Um, and of course, the overall platform can deploy on, on any of the clouds and work with your existing data sources and infrastructure. In CSI, we also really think of you know, knowledge graph as an overlay. Um, it's certainly possible to deploy a, a graph database or a knowledge graph as a silo. Um, but it's really best deployed as an overlay that sits across your data warehouses, uh, data lakes, uh, cloud deployments, so they can really uh, be that integration layer and a virtualization layer between the users and the data to help them integrate data and consume data um, through semantic models. 
I mean, importantly, you know, this is done in a really iterative fashion. So you don't start by building an entire data fabric of the organization and the resulting knowledge graph. You start with the sources important for a given use case, uh, build your ontologies to suit those use cases and grow and build incrementally. Uh, and that's really an important part of, of the methodology uh, that we work with, uh, with our customers um, as they work to build out their enterprise scale knowledge graphs. So it starts with, you know, build a catalog of, of your of knowledge graphs from existing data sources. And again, that's not all of your data sources, but it's the data sources relevant to the current task. Uh, you then align um, the knowledge graphs coming from different sources into a common semantic model based on business meeting, again, driven by the use case and the requirements. So you don't have to get the mapping exactly right, but you just have to integrate those data sources in a way that serves the, the current set of use cases. Uh, we then uh, create the business rules that actually map and align and integrate the data. And there's a lot of intelligence and automation built into that process. And finally, analyze the knowledge graph, you know, build some rapid dashboards, access the data in your data science notebooks, pull it into a notebook and play around with the data and then iterate on steps two and three until you get the, the model right for the use cases, then continue to add data sources going forward. So it's a very iterative incremental process as you grow the knowledge graph within the organization. And the underlying platform kind of keeps track of all these steps, so it becomes very repeatable, shareable, and reusable uh, throughout the organization. So that's a brief um, introduction to the, the, the scalable knowledge graph platform and how we apply it to a number of, of customers. Um, so to wrap up, Barbara, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you, Ben. Um, thank you very much for that, that information. Um, as we uh, draw to a close here, I just want to call your attention to uh, three um, pieces of further information that you might want to take a look at if you found um, the discussion today interesting. The first is a, um, a white paper on our website that outlines some of the requirements for a, a highly scalable knowledge graph platform. Um, the second is an ebook we recently uh, wrote with Dean Alamang called The Rise of the Knowledge Graph that provides a really strong and broad introduction to the topic. Um, and the third is a suggestion that you might want to subscribe to Cambridge Semantics blog. Um, if you do so, you will get a, a not overwhelming, but a, a regular um, refresh of new information and topics around this subject. Thanks very much for your time today. And with that, we will close this session.